Hello everyone and welcome to my cozy bamboo world. We recently transformed the stronghold from its default generation into a beautiful koi pond with a lotus flower as the portal. As I've been putting together some of these larger projects, I'm realizing that it would be a lot easier if I could sneak a little bit faster as I build things. So today we are going to be making an automated wool farm and going to an ancient city to find Swift Sneak. If you're excited for today's projects and adventures, make sure to leave a like and check if you're subscribed. Now as far as placement for our wool farm, I think this beach right here would be perfect. Now my idea for this is we're going to actually create kind of a lighthouse if I go into free cam. I want to have a Japanese inspired little tower lighthouse here so that we can have all of our stacked wool modules on top of each other. And because if we go in this direction, the way to spawn is this direction. So if we're flying to and from spawn, having a lighthouse here is going to be perfect to see it from further away. So let's stop by our storage build, grab up some building blocks for the outline and grab a bunch of wheat to turn Turn this mud into packed mud. Next, we need to clear out some of this space so that we have enough space to build our lighthouse, which the base is going to be a 19 by 19 square, and then we're going to build up from there. So my thought is that we're actually going to take out this little patch of dark oak and expand the beach so that it's a bit larger. So since I'm just thinking of wanting to do that, and we need to wait for these guys to move or despawn. We're instead gonna go back to our storage room and collect some sand, and then we're going to build out our beach and lay out our outline. Now, as far as the size, this is 19 by 19, like I mentioned. So this section right here is going to be our best bet for the spacing. So let's just start placing some blocks to get our outline set up so we can go and collect all of the resources needed to build the auto farm and then the build itself. And now that we have our base outline in place, we need a lot of blocks for both the wool farm itself and the decorative blocks to go around it. So let's go collect all of the necessary resources to build our 14 wool farm modules and do a little bit of redstone with red. All right, we've got our box of things that we will need to create our wool farms. So for this first set, we have the observer facing the grass, and then we're going to have a dispenser holding our shears go above that, and we want the dispenser to face this direction like so. And then you can just add glass all the way around to make sure that your sheep don't somehow get out and cause even more of a headache than it will be just trying to get them in here as is. And on the back where the observer is, you're going to place a block so that you can just put a piece of redstone on top of that so it kind of connects these two together. And one hack to make sure that the sheep doesn't completely remove all of the grass, I always will add another layer of grass around this just so when they pull from the block that they're standing on some of this that they can't touch 
will then grow back the grass on the spots where they're sitting. Now with this setup, I want there to only be one column where all of the wool is going to get dispersed into. So what we're going to do is create a hopper line in this middle and this is gonna go up pretty high because all of the chests are going to get connected into this line of hoppers. So now that you kind of know how we're going to be making all of these little wool farm modules, I'm just going to work on building them all the way seven layers high and then we'll bring some sheep in. Now, I just noticed something. I have the redstone in the correct place, there's shears inside here, and I just realized that our sheep, once they are sheared, they grow back their wool, but the grass block does not change to dirt. And therefore, the observer does not register that this has changed and does not shear my sheep. All because I have mob griefing turned off. So if anybody has mob griefing turned off and wants to make a wool farm, you literally can't. Uh, so I have to do a think and figure out how on earth I'm going to get enough wool to go raid an ancient city because I did all of this work. I even made a bubble elevator to get all our sheep in and I... I, I literally cannot do anything with said thing that I just built. So I need to do quite the think of how to fix my griefing problem because at this point, it's gonna impact all my farms. Then I remembered that Brooke messaged me recently about a fix to this issue. She said the solution was simply to click the open to LAN and then turn on allow cheats so that I could use commands again. And then I just use the slash command to once again, turn on mob griefing. All right. I. I think I fixed this. I turned mob griefing back on. So I feel like this should fix all of the issues that we've been having related to our game. Not letting the villagers pick up bread. Oh, yes. Oh my gosh. Yes, yes, yes. Does that mean? Oh my gosh, it's working. Okay. <laughs> I've fixed the problem. We can continue making the wool farm, which is literally the best news because honestly i i don't know what i would have done Right, and after the rain, we have the rainbow, and we have all seven of our units of our sheep farm complete, and they're all working properly with the shears taking the wool as the sheep eat their little grass pieces. So far we have almost three stacks of wool from just these 14 sheep, and then before we actually start building, I want to go to the ancient city because building this would be a lot easier if I had swift sneak. So once we get enough wool collected from these guys, we're gonna go find a city. So I decided to AFK in a box for a bit and when I came back, I slept away the phantoms and walked away from my desk again and then came back to this message. Um, I don't know how I died. How are you here with, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. 
All right, I know what happened, guys, okay? So, I decided to AFK just a little bit. I had to go to a Cairo appointment IRL, and so I decided to put myself in this box while I was away. So we have tons of wool, which is great for going to the ancient city. However, when I came back from my appointment, I had a bunch of phantoms kind of hovering above me. And so I slept through the night and then I think it spawned me right here outside of my box. And that's how the zombies got me. And that's how uh, I lost all my levels. So I, I that makes sense, that checks out. And I don't think I actually lost any of my gear, which is great. And speaking of our armor, I think it's time to upgrade our diamond to netherite. Now on a live stream, I had gone into the nether and used a bunch of TNT and we were able to get a bunch of netherite scrap and we found some of the smithing templates. We've got a ton of diamonds and we have the netherrack in order to replicate these netherite upgrades. And over here in our portal room area, we've got a bunch of different armor trims that we can try out. So we're bringing all of our trims over to where we have our netherite so we can combine them into some fancy new armor, which will help me a lot when we're going to, you know, hang out and explore where the warden lives. First, we collected up some gold in the nether and crafted those into gold ingots. Then we went back and crafted our netherite ingots and made a few extra upgrade templates. We then crafted up some new diamond armor, added dune with diamond trim to our helmet and upgraded it to netherite, added eye and diamond to our chest plate and upgraded that piece, added wild and diamond to our leggings before upgrading those, and finally added wild and diamond to our boots to complete our full set of netherite armor. And, there we go. We've got all netherite on our little self and I think we look so cute. And I feel so much safer. And we sadly only have five diamonds left, so hopefully we can get some new diamonds eventually, but for now, it's okay that we're running lower on them. But we're putting our elytra back on for now. So this is how we're gonna look most of the time. So I made sure that I really liked how the leggings looked with the trim with me just wearing my elytra. And we quickly grabbed a bunch of enchanted books so we could add those to our fancy new armor. But since I had died and lost my levels, we had to take a quick trip over to our newly transformed stronghold room, which I still can't get over how beautiful this room is. We hopped into the end and made our way over to our Enderman XP farm and collected up a ton of XP and then added all our different books onto our armor. All right, we officially have our levels back from dying and we added a bunch of different enchants to our armor so that we're not just going in there with unenchanted armor. I don't have unbreaking three on everything, but on most things. All right, we are back in the overworld and we are heading back towards spawn because there is a ancient city underneath the snow and icy mountain beyond our cherry grove. So right kind of where we were breeding up our green frogs on this hill here is where we're going to start looking around for an entrance into the ancient city. Also, I just have to say this little spot by spawn is so pretty. I'm, I'm such a fan, but now it is time to find our way into the cave and okay. Now, luckily I have a mod that gives me a night vision. So I just have to toggle it on and then we make our way. And I have to remember that this cave is pitch black even though I can see these skeletons like it's the middle of the day. Let's uh, let's get on in there. I've got my shield. We've got netherite as most of our gear. So no time like the present, right?
And there we have it guys, Swift Sneak 3 in one of the first chests we open and an efficiency of 5. <sighs> These are amazing finds, and you know, I think I'm not gonna get too greedy. This place is absolutely massive, and there's still so much to explore and find, but our main mission was to find Swift Sneak 3 and then add it to our pants, and I'm gonna call that good. We got two Swift Sneak 2 books, one Swift Sneak 3 book, and Ward, and I'm not going to risk it any more than I need to, so literally, even though we just got here, I'm going home to safety since we still have to build. And before anything too crazy happens, I'm putting Swift Sneak 3 into our ender chest with our ward armor trim. All right, now we're grabbing our bed and making our way up and out of here. And I still need to be careful because this is the deep dark and wardens can still spawn even though I successfully did not spawn any. I'm not out of the clear quite yet because we're... We're still in deep dark territory, so let's carefully make our way back home and avoid that. But I am pretty surprised, guys. We have an entire another one to explore, so maybe between these two, maybe we can find the silence armor trim for another pair of armor. For now though, I'm just going to use the wool that we do have and we're going to use that to help us get up and out of here and hopefully we won't have any mobs setting off these shriekers while we work on getting out of here. Okay, look at that, we're in the clear. I'm purposefully not using my wings to get out because I want to dot around a bunch of wool. But look at that, there's two different ways that we can get out. This is directly underneath the cherry grove. Oh, I love that so much. All right, we are back safely to our base area and I want to go and add Swift Sneak 3 to my pants right now. So we're gonna go inside our storage room, make sure I reset my spawn. I still can't believe that we found Swift Sneak 3 within like what? Less than 10 minutes of being there. I think I went through maybe six chests and then we found it, which in my opinion is very, very fast. And then we've got our pants and we've got Swift Sneak 3. There we go. Now before we put these on, I wanted to do a test. Let's see how fast I can sneak with and without them, okay? So we sneaking, we sneaking, and we put them on. Oh! <gasps> Whoa, we go so fast. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. Oh my gosh, we're so sneaky. I love this so much. Oh my gosh. Now we're going to start adding in all of the white dye that we have for our project today because we're going to use a white dye with a lot of sand because we are going to be making a white concrete powder. First, we're gonna collect up a bunch more sand for making the concrete. Then we'll collect up a bunch of gravel to make the concrete powder. Then I'm going to make up a bunch of white concrete powder. Do some pillaring up. Now we're going to just add in some walls so that I can get the correct dimensions for our house so that when we're adding in our little concrete maker into this build, we actually will know exactly where it needs to be placed.
with our little concrete maker up and running, we have enough white concrete to start making the walls for our lighthouse. So let's get started on building up these walls, shall we? And here we have our lighthouse during the day and at night with the lighthouse's beacon shining bright as a guide to get us back home to our base and I think this turned out beautifully. We still have the interior to decorate and so I wanted to ask you guys what you think we should put in here whether it's just for decoration or giving this area more of a function besides where we get all of our wool collected up and where we make our concrete. But I hope you enjoyed seeing our wool farm modules transform from just all their redstone bits into a beautiful lighthouse tower. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I will see you in the next one.